All right, welcome everybody. This is our uh, first attempt at uh, trying to share a chapel message with you guys. We've had uh, some devotions shared by Mr. Tashuti and Mr. Ferguson, and uh, now I'd like to try and uh, try and share a chapel with you guys. Today was actually the day I was uh, up on the schedule to do a chapel, so this is something I had been preparing for a little bit, but uh, given some recent events, it's it's certainly different. It's got a different feel here. I'm in a I'm in an empty gym, um, but. Uh, a lot of things I want to try and do uh, with this are going to try and at least give the feel for it, I hope, uh, like, uh, like we're part of a regular chapel. So let's make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Have no anxiety about anything. But in everything, by prayer, let your requests be made known to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and in repentance of evil. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let, Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading I uh, have for you guys today is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was, he was delivered up to death. He, he was, was delivered, delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven whose sin is covered. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, now for the message. So, 
Lent is my favorite time in the church year. Um, and that's why I wanted to use the responsory for the chapel. Uh, it's Lenten specific. I just really enjoy the Lenten time of year and I want to talk about that and why a little bit. Um, in the early church, Lent was a time of intensive preparation leading up to Easter for uh, baptismal candidates who would be baptized on the Easter vigil on Holy Saturday. It was just kind of viewed as like, hey, this is the, this is the right time for people to be baptized uh, between Christ's death and resurrection because of the connection that uh, our baptism has to, has to those things. Um, one thing that I really enjoy during the Lenten season is the music. A song I like a lot is, a hymn I like a lot is, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. And uh, that starts out and says, Alas and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? And I don't know why, I, I just, I like calling myself a worm. Like, it's good, I, I enjoy that. Um, and that's, sometimes we can get caught up in that's, that's the message Lent sends, we're, we're to think about our sin. But why, why would anyone, why would anyone like that? Why would anyone enjoy that? And as far as I can figure, it's because we know the ending. We already know the end of the story. We know what happens. And thanks be to God for that ending. I don't know about you, but when reading in the Bible, I frequently want to be able to, the, to tell the disciples to just say, come on, man. Hello. But I know the ending. You know the ending. At the time we're reading, they didn't know the ending. By the way, if... Students who are watching this, you know I like to walk around a lot during chapel, so it's, it's very tough for me to make sure I'm staying on camera here. I, I want to move around a lot. Um, but the disciples didn't know that ending. We do. My daughter has gotten into the habit big time. Um, re when we're reading a book, when we're watching a movie, something, she likes to say, and she says it like this, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? She gets very excited, and she wants to know what's going to happen. She wants to know the ending. The great thing about Lent is that we know what will happen. The tough thing about our current situation is that we don't. Right? We're home from school. Many of our students and families have given up some unexpected things for Lent. Uh, a girls basketball regional final, choir tour, interim, the beginning of spring sports, uh, most of our social behaviors and interaction for the month of March, things are changing so fast that I constantly feel like my daughter. I want to know what's going to happen. What's going to happen? It's frustrating not to know what's going to happen. And with all of this, nothing is guaranteed. There's nothing we know for sure. The only sure and certain guarantee we have is what's going to happen the sure thing is Christ. The ending we know for Lent. School has been canceled. Games have been canceled. Choir tours, practice, meetings, work, they've all been canceled. But one thing that hasn't been canceled and won't be canceled is happening on April 12th, 2020. Christ is not canceled. Easter is not canceled. Jesus' resurrection is not canceled, and the forgiveness of our sins is not canceled. We still have the sure and certain hope of Christ in these tough times. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. While there's sin in the world, while we are enemies, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the ending we know, and that is why I love Lent. I know the ending. I know Christ died for my sins. I know Christ died for your sins. And I know Christ died for all sins. We have the amazing unearned gift of forgiveness. While we struggle with not knowing, we must remember to turn to Christ as our rock and our redeemer. Let's pray responsively. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart, 
and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Let's pray. I, I thank, thank you, you, my, my heavenly, heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Christ, Christ your dear Son, Son that, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that, that all my doings in life, life may please you. For into your, your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let, let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.